<laughs> You're the best, best, best dressed man I've seen in a while. What a Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Andrew? Yeah, thank you very much. That's great. Thanks. We're going to do the... Uh, this is the down part in the military. How many we got? We got 19, I think. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. No more important job. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. You look up. Thanks. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Joe Plata. I'm with White House Thanks. Communication. I've been working with audiovisual here. I've uh, recently retired after 20 years of service. I'm 10 years in Walker. Where are you going now? I'm looking for, I'm interviewing for uh, telecommunications opportunities. Look up. That's good. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, okay. yes, sir. My name is Mark Schmidt, and I'm retiring after 16 years. <coughs> what are you going to do? I'm uh, going to work for a small communications uh, company in the area. Thank you Thank for you. your service. Thank Good you. luck. Uh, Deputy Mr. President, I'm Dave Vickers from White House Communications. I'm going to be going to Greenville, South Carolina. You tell me. Oh, well, good luck to you. Thank, Thank you, me. sir. Appreciate it. Where are you going? Uh, hopefully you get line core in July to go to the law school. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks, sir. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Sergeant Keefe overworked in the presidential contingency programs. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm going to get out of line core and go study nursing or medical or something. Good luck this year. Thanks, sir. Thank you for your service. Thanks, sir. HMX, sir. All right, sir. John Tussie, head of the Monterey Study Career. Oh, you are? Yes, sir. Good for you. I hope we don't have enough trouble. Uh, uh, I hope there's something that stinks. Yeah, so do I. Thank you very much. Glad we could keep that language institute open. You're a good argument for it. Yes, sir. Mr. President, great to have you, sir. HMH, all these issues. What are you going to do now? I'm in real throat, no claims. That's a nice place. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mark Kelly. Oh, great. Yes, sir. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to send Mayor Rendell some money so you can yes, serve the police officer. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Sorry, Mr. President. I'm going to transfer it to Okinawa, Japan. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. That's great. You've been reading about Houston. It's the most successful anti-crime program in the country. Yes, sir. <coughs> Murder rates down 27 percent in 15 months. Overall crime rate down 22 percent because the mayor's put more police officers on the street. That's good. Thank you, sir. Good for you. Thanks, Thank sir. you. Thank you, sir, from our medical unit. With medical unit. All right, sir. Fine. Thank you. Good to see you. What are you going to do now? Sir, I'm going to retire and uh, go to Atlanta. Yeah, private practice, orthopedics. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Camp David. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Going to the USSR. Great. Thank you. Have a good turn. How are you doing, sir? Harry and I. Hello, sir. What are you going to do now? Headed to USS Pensacola. That's great. Or as my little boy says, USS Pepsi Cola. Good for you. Thank you for your service. Hi, Mr. President. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Peter Landers. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Where are you going then? I'm going to Point Inman, California. John Wayne's Navy. That's great. Good to see you. Good for you. Yes, sir. Keep your head down the back. Sir. Thank you. All good. I remember that. I'm hitting pretty good now. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Uh, Robert Sisler from Superior, Wisconsin. Good to see you. Camp David crew member. I'm taking out to I'm going to state. I'm supporting you. Good for you. Thanks. Thanks. Camp Evans, California, sir. Thank you for your service. 
White House Transportation. What are you going to do now? I'm being reassigned to Las Cruces, New Mexico, for a reserve unit. Good luck to you. Thank you. Did you ever live out there? Uh, I was born in Farmington, New Mexico. It's a great place. I love New Mexico. I yeah. like Las Cruces a lot. Thank you. You take care of Thank you, sir. Frank is one of your social members. Hello, sir. Frank Pugelli. Yeah, good Worked to see you. Worked in social life for about two years. Did you enjoy it? Yes, sir. It was a lot of fun. Where are you going now? Uh, Barbers Point, Hawaii. <laughs> Just received a lawyer, so. This guy's got another, two, another hardship, yeah. hardship tour. <laughs> That's really rough. Nice Good to luck, sir. All right, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks.
Mr. President, before you uh, uh, do the signing and, and make your statement, if I could say just a brief word of uh, introduction to people, most of whom you already know, I, I want to say that I uh, have had the honor, along with the, my, my brother John Lewis here, of being involved with this community for a long, long time. Ben Chavis, uh, who is stuck in snow uh, in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, uh, in many ways initiated the awakening of the nation's uh, conscience on this issue many years ago when uh, he directed uh, the United Churches of Christ uh, in a study of this problem. And as you know very well, Mr. President, the communities that are lacking political, economic, and social power are less able to defend themselves against uh, insults uh, and violence of all kinds, including against the dumping of pollution and the visiting of environmental hardships uh, upon their communities. We're used to acknowledging that in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union. Uh, and now we are better able to recognize the exact same phenomena in different forms here in poor and minority communities throughout the United States of America. And the, uh, the, the structure of power and influence uh, in in the area surrounding these communities, uh, always seems to have a more effective way to exert influence on the policies of the federal government than do those who are victimized by their actions. And this administration, from its inception, under your direction, has made environmental justice a priority. Uh, this is a further step, a, a passing of a significant threshold that will enable us to accelerate the activity in every agency and department uh, involved here. And I want to uh, single out uh, not only uh, John Lewis, uh, but also uh, Senator Wellstone, Chairman uh, John Conyers, Senator Carol Mosley-Braun, also Max Baucus, who is not here, who took over from me as a principal sponsor in the Senate of John Lewis's legislation, and uh, individuals who have been uh, uh, fighting for this uh, cause with all their hearts and souls. Uh, and we're very proud that uh, Attorney General Janet Reno and EPA Administrator Carol Browner and uh, Katie McGinty of the Office of Environment Policy are here uh, to witness this as well because they have worked so hard. But these individual activists who are really the tip of a very large iceberg, and we could fill up this uh, White House many times over with the people who've been working on this. So this is, I, I, you can tell I feel strongly about this. <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm just getting warmed up, no, but uh, with that, I want to uh, present you to these people, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. <laughs> the first time that the Vice President and I discussed this issue, was the first conversation I ever had with him about becoming vice president. And we started talking about you, John. I don't know how you came up with it, you often do. And, and uh, literally, the first time we discussed this was in the summer of 1992, mm -hmm. when I first met with him about joining the ticket. And we were talking about how the environment was really an issue for poor people, for abandoned communities, and, and that, that no one ever saw it that way, and how we had to recast the whole environmental issue in a number of different ways. And I gave him several examples from uh, my own experience. So what this order does, thanks to a year's work of work by Carol Browner and the Attorney General and Katie McGinnis, is to require every government department to consider environmental justice in all of its activities, research, permitting, uh, enforcement, anything they do affecting human health and the environment must now have an environmental justice component. And we're giving these uh, departments this year to actually come up with an affirmative strategy to promote environmental justice that will involve the groups that you represent around the country in a way they've never before been involved in the decision-making process. So we're going to give you a chance to make sure your voices can be heard. If we've learned anything in this area, it is that there are oftentimes no easy answers. Uh, but the people who aren't listened to can hardly be expected to respect the answers, whether they agree with them or not. 
And that's basically what we're trying to do here is to guarantee that kind of input. Um, I do thank the, the members of Congress who are here and those who aren't who agree with them. And I, I also want to say a special word of thanks to Ben Chavis who has discussed this issue with me personally also. But I thank all of you and those whom you represent. And I just want to assure you personally that this is something that this administration believes in, is committed to, and will carry out. And I expect you <laughs> to aggressively see that we do carry out. <laughs> <laughs> Black churches have played a magnificent role in this also, and the, 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 the several ministers are, are impeded by the snow from being here. It is funny snow, Dave. Oh, kind of oh, yeah. you know? Hillary left to go open the Olympics, and I was afraid that they'd get frozen out. And, It'd be funny if you couldn't get from Washington, D.C. to Norway because of the snow in Washington. <laughs> we might explain, Mr. President, to the people that to do this actually takes two documents. Mm -hmm. And quite a few pens. <laughs> if we're going to give them all of you who are here, it takes quite a few pens. Whoever did this counted before we did it. Oh, we share. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. It's always a pleasure, sir. Oh, thank you. Sharon, have you shot us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. We've got a lot of work ahead of us now. Good to see you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, he was a professor at the University of Tennessee before he went to really? out to the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. And he wrote, he wrote Dumping on Dixie, which I uh, used in my book and uh, helped awaken my kind of And he told the president. Just present, Professor Solar. Years ago, when I was in California, Good Yeah. Mm -hmm. This room 
uh, it's called uh, it's uh, the family dining room. And, and you see the, the uh, wallpaper on the wall is very old, uh, and it depicts scenes from our revolutionary period, from the beginning of the United States. And this, this room was created by uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. Before President Kennedy in 1961, from 1800 until 1961, the president and his family uh, went downstairs to dinner. 